Hi everyone, this is Dr. J. Wes Alm doing a brief meditation on real world heroes and their characteristics as part of Phil LeDuc's Heroes of the COVID Crisis series. Uh, so heroism is a concept and a term that we encounter a good deal in both fictional and real world contexts these days. It's after all the theme of several multi-billion dollar movie franchises such as Avengers and other Marvel and DC uh, comic story sources. Uh, but uh, in the real world, of course, uh, heroes, unfortunately, <laughs> at a time like this, we don't have invulnerability. Uh, we don't have uh, real superpowers, at least not that any of us know of. But the true-to-life versions of heroes are, if anything, in many ways, a whole lot more interesting. Um, and in the context of the Heroes of the COVID Crisis series, I've laid out five characteristics, really basic features that define real world heroism, um, along with some historical examples that help to uh, exemplify that. And so uh, starting out with the first defining characteristic, it's something that I like to call stoical empiricism. And what I mean by that is a kind of dogged dedication to the truth uh, against inconvenience, against uh, heavy resistance from the community, um, against conventional wisdom, until finally uh, the truth is established and really just kind of pushed through by the force of will of this individual. Um, and again, since I'm sort of kind of focusing on medical heroes, um, in this case, I'm going to pick two examples from the realm of medical history who really exemplified this trait of heroism. Uh, one is Dr. Very Marshall, uh, a physician um, in Australia, and the other is Dr. Ignat Semmelweis, a physician from uh, a, a, about a century ago um, in Hungary. And um, Dr. Marshall, it's a name that some of you may know, um, he was the Australian physician who was the first to elucidate that peptic ulcer disease, which has been a long time uh, plague of uh, society, was the result primarily of a gut bacterium called Helicobacter pylori. Now, this really flew in the face of conventional wisdom at the time. And Dr. Marshall faced some very heavy resistance at the cost of his career to the point that he literally actually drank a flask of the darn bacterium to cause peptic ulcer disease in himself, sort of kind of a, what we call a Cox postulate demonstration, to prove that it was the true etiology, i.e. the main cause of the disease. And um, while this may seem like an extreme example to many, um, it really helps to exemplify um, Dr. Marshall's really this dogged dedication to the truth, the stoical empiricism that the truth had to come out. That was true heroism. This was similarly demonstrated in Dr. Semmelweis, again, the Hungarian physician um, from really a century before Dr. Marshall, who was one of the first to introduce, really the first, to introduce antiseptic techniques into obstetrics and gynecology, and particularly in association with childbirth. Um, it's a sad, uh, tragic, and quite harrowing story of medical history. Um, but uh, childbirth used to be very dangerous for both uh, uh, mothers and children. And if anything, it actually got more dangerous around sort of the turn of the 19th and the 20th centuries than it had been before because of the um, intervention of many midwives and physicians who at the time did not really understand antiseptic technique. Semmelweis, really against uh, some pretty heavy opposition at the time, pushed against that and explained the importance of antiseptic technique. At the time, uh, there really wasn't, you know, much understanding of germ theory or bacteria, but Semmelweis showed how antiseptic practices would literally save lives. And the, the work that he conducted and that Dr. Marsh conducted really has literally saved millions and millions of people since then and made a lot of modern medicine possible. <clears throat> the second defining characteristic that I would provide for real world true life heroes, and again, particularly medical heroes, it's kind of related to the first. And this is something that I would call sort of a prime mover, prime mover faculty. This is the, the facility of really being iron will, just so dedicated to medical progress in this case, or progress of another sort, um, that one is really just, uh, 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 just, just driven to, to push ahead and just will oneself and sort of will uh, uh, his, his or her team around them to bringing that progress about. Um, I'd like to sort of bring this up in the context of a quote from the Irish playwright George Murad Shaw, George Murad Shaw that I often cite, which essentially is along the lines of the um, most people will just sort of kind of adjust to the currents of history and be carried along with it. However, certain unreasonable people, or at least uh, maybe reasonable people um, who sort of uh, at, at certain times when they take a, a more unreasonable stance, will instead push against the currents of history or guide them themselves and bring about change. And Shaw said that in, in many ways, the vast majority of progress throughout human civilization has occurred from these people 
who undertake these irrational or unreasonable stances, but ones that are grounded in truth and empiricism and push to bring them about. And so that's kind of the second characteristic of real world, especially medical heroism, I like to cite. These people who really kind of brought about a new world or a new system of medicine just by sheer force of will. And two of these Iron World individuals who've literally saved billions of people with their work that I like to bring up are Gerhard Domach and Rudolf Virchow, both German physicians sort of kind of working around the turn of the, 20th, of the 19th into the 20th century. Gerhard Domach may, may not be a household name, but many of us are alive today because of him. Um, Domach was the individual who created, along with Paul Ehrlich, essentially the first antibiotics in the form of sulfa drugs. He'd been badly wounded in World War I, he saw the suffering of soldiers from both sides in that conflict, and he realized that there was a way to help mitigate that um, also in a peacetime civilian context by reducing the toll of bacterial infection. And through really dog experimentation, sort of like what we read about with Thomas Edison and his team with the first light bulb, Domach brought about the first drugs that were effective in treating um, microbial disease, bacterial disease in particular. And sulfur drugs were so good that we still use them today in the clinic. Um, Dr. Domach's compatriot, Rudolf Virchow, also, who also worked in pathology, sort of like Dr. Domach, um, was one of the founding fathers of modern pathology and thus the scientific basis of medical practice. And as part of that, um, Dr. Verkov was one of the prime movers and pioneers of modern sanitation and hygienic practices, in particular things like running water and the precursors for antiseptic practice. And Dr. Verkov, uh, again like Dr. Domak, is one of those medical heroes who's made uh, what we just sort of uh, take for granted and associate with developed societies possible for public health by pushing the pathologic basis of disease and sanitation at the time against um, really sort of the resistance of conventional wisdom and the establishment, which really didn't see those things coming forward. Both of these individuals had a really iron will to bring this new world about, and they did it. And all of us today owe a real debt of gratitude to them. The third major characteristic of real world heroes, in particular medical heroes, and this one will be a little bit more self-explanatory and obvious, is self-sacrifice. And this one needs fairly little, little introduction and really not much in the way of historical examples because it's, it's exemplified in the person of millions of healthcare workers today. The nurses, the physicians, the orderlies, the respiratory therapists, physical therapists, just the countless people across the world um, who are going to the face of danger, exhaustion, um, frustration, tears, literally, literally blood and tears and sweat, um, uncertainty, and a great personal risk to themselves to provide treatment and simple comfort to the tens of millions um, and possibly soon hundreds of millions of people afflicted um, by the COVID-19 pandemic. The fourth defining characteristic of real world heroes that I'd like to bring up is empathy. And this one may not be really at the top of the list. It may not really be the first one that pops in our heads. But I argue that it's one of the most important of all kinds of heroism, particularly medical heroism. Because even though I think at an instinctual level, we may associate heroism with, you know, grand sweeping gestures and actions that, you know, you can almost imagine, you know, the John Williams um, film soundtrack, you know, being, you know, tied into with. Uh, in heroism, the real world is more fundamentally associated with, with the little things, just the, the tiny improvements that bring comfort and improvements to individuals and groups on a public health basis. And the historical examples I'd like to cite in this regard are three really formative nurses who helped to really define what nursing today is as a profession. Uh, Dorothea Dix um, is one, Mary C. Cole is another, and the third is Mary Bijet, one American, one British, and one French. And what all these three nurses had in common, what really makes them heroic, is that they not only delivered great care to their patients, but they advanced the concept of nursing to show how it was a kind of advocacy, and particularly, in particular, a kind of empathetic advocacy for those who are the most dispossessed, the most downtrodden, and the most vulnerable. In other words, the ones who are least able to speak up for and defend themselves. Dorothea Dix, as many of you may know, was um, an American nurse who was one of the pioneers of bringing top quality nursing care um, to those with psychiatric disease. Um, the insane asylums of the 19th century in America were a literal, you know, just horror environment, just a horror show for those inside many of them. Um, they were often mistreated, there's a lot of abuse, and, and often very little in the way of good nursing care and treatment. And Dorothea Dix was really one of the driving forces who changed that, and she uh, therefore 
brought about improved nursing care for large populations in general. Very, very heroic on her part and very empathetic. It was really driven by her empathy. Mary Seacole is a British nurse who, among other things, used her own funds at the time to bring about nursing care um, to those who were afflicted. Um, like Florence Nightingale, um, she was active in helping soldiers uh, afflicted and wounded in the Korean War. But most notably, Mary Seacole helped out um, with a cholera epidemic, a very severe outbreak in Jamaica. People who were very impoverished, destitute, really had no capacity to um, provide for themselves or defend themselves. And uh, Mary Seacole, with her own funds and devices, brought about incredible care and really revolutionized the practice of epidemic nursing um, in ways that has helped to, um, uh, in, in, in a lot of respects, um, uh, define the care that's also provided today in the COVID-19 pandemic. And this was also born of, of Seacole's very just bottomless empathy for the downtrodden. The third example um, was Anne Biget, a French nurse in the early 19th century, uh, sort of around the time of the Napoleonic Wars. Um, Anne Biget um, was a powerful guardian advocate for those who were imprisoned, again, on all sides of the conflict. An amazing individual who really brought about incredible care and protection for those who were most vulnerable and often you know, spat upon the prisoners in, at the time, very poorly maintained um, jail cells um, and uh, incarceration facilities uh, in Europe during wartime. Um, again, it was her, her boundless empathy which drove this. And so this is, again, a, a very powerful feature of World Heroes that, that it's very important to emphasize. And the fifth and final feature, really defining characteristic of Real World Heroes that I bring up, <clears throat> is prudence and nuance, particularly in the sense of balance. Um, again, it's not maybe the first characters that pops into our minds, but it's important because heroism in the real world isn't easy. And it, it, in, in combination with a will to be a heroic and to do you know, altruistic deeds, it has to be combined with good judgment. And that's often easier said than done. And there's a reason that we have this very commonly repeated refrain and maxim that the road to hell is paved with good intentions, because often the best intentions can lead to disaster if they're not well thought out and if there isn't really good planning ahead. And what I'm thinking of it here is sort of the conjunction of public health with environmental health and the health of the broader ecosystem. It's something that's easily forgotten, but one of the reasons that we're struggling now with the COVID-19 pandemic in the first place, as with, with, with the HIV pandemic before, is that the natural ecosystem is being strained so much that zoonoses, which are diseases passed from animals to humans, as both COVID-19 and HIV are, are arising as a result. And so a more integrated way to improve public health would have to include the flora and fauna of the world, um, the support of which will help to also improve human public health. And two individuals in history who realized this and really exemplified this sense of prudence and nuance in their advocacy of public health are Rachel Carson, the environmentalist and author of Silent Spring, and the French priest and philosopher Pierre Talhard de Chardin. Rachel Carson, as many of you may know, was one of the first individuals to, uh, to explain the concept of externalization and the way that pollution and environmental damage is too often sort of left off a balance sheet, even though it has real-world consequences for both people and the natural world that surrounds us and sustains us, that provides the infrastructure for civilization, for civilization itself. And Talard de Chardin, again, was the French theologian, philosopher, and really just a polymath, just a master of all trades, um, who, among other things, helped to popularize a concept from a Russian philosopher named Vladimir Vernadsky of the no-sphere, sort of a productive and constructive interaction and meeting of minds to help to advance the causes of civilization, complexity, creativity, and so forth. Um, basically sort of enlightenment ideals. Now, the, the idea of the noosphere from Vernadsky and Talad de Chardin, it may sort of kind of sound a lot like the internet. In some ways, that, that, that sort of encompasses the idea. But Talad de Chardin took it a lot further because he realized that having a good working environment for human society and civilization depends also on, on providing good support for the flora and fauna, the natural world that surrounds us. And so he, like Rachel Carson, really espoused uh, very fundamental ideas about hu how human civilization is best advanced, sustained, and uh, brought forward by paying better attention and integrating human industry um, and economic and technological advancement with the natural world and environment around us. So again, the, those are the five really fundamental characteristics that I associate with real world heroes, particularly medical heroes, this, this idea um, of stoical empiricism, this dogged dedication to the truth, of really having this prime mover faculty, kind of this iron will to move things forward, as Gerhard Dolmach and uh, Dr. Rudolf Virchow did, of self-sacrifice, 
of empathy, very, very important, um, and of really prudence, nuance, and balance. Uh, again, this is a, a summary of um, sort of these five features of, of, of Real World Heroes for Phil LeDuc's Heroes of the COVID Crisis series. I thank you for your time. I hope this has been helpful, informative, uh, food for thought for you, and have a wonderful day wherever you are. And stay safe.